I'm not offended. <laughs> Hi, please, yes, I'm sorry. Can we have our... Please introduce yourself and, and what we're going to hear. Okay. Hi, my name is Kelly Rubinson, and I will be singing I Can Smell the Sea Air from Andre Carlin's Sweet Corn Your Desire. Um, the story takes place at the end of the show after the descent into madness, and it's sort of a, a vision that she has um, before she's being committed by her sister and her brother in law. This is also Blanche Dubois, for those of you wondering what character I am. <laughs> Thank you. What did you hear from Juliana? Um, the memo that it's down here, not up here. Good. Um, and about um, cutting, you know, variety in the in the section so that there's not meat to it and so that we um, basically have communication before you. Did you do that? I was trying, not to hurt the person. 
A lot of it did. A lot of it did. But I mean, that is those are those are wonderful points that I would want you to 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 hear, and, and I appreciate you getting back that way. Um, a lot of the first part of your discussing that and, and, and what I keep talking about engineering, you know, the, the kind of nuts and bolts and screws and, and all that stuff. But what's that all about? It's the light bulb that we're going to have light from. It's whatever metaphor you want to have there. Tell me about Blanche. What's going on? You know, I don't want opera plot. I don't want the Kobe book. I, I want to know. I want to know from you where this heavily metaphorical text is heavily metaphorical mm -hmm. and, and heavily spot on true. Mm -hmm. Philip Patel is just such a wonderful writer. I mean, talk about singable text. Mm -hmm. Wow. What, what's going on? What is this all about? What is this sea? Is she, at, you know, is, she on, is she at the breeze? Is she at the sea? Does she yeah. dream of the sea? No, she um, is in her, in her bedroom Does she fear for her life? Um, yes. I mean, seriously? Yes. At this point? Or at least she has moments of being really, truly afraid. In this particular song, she's, I don't think she has that awareness. So all this sea stuff, ocean stuff, is one metaphoric. Mm -hmm. For what? Um, well, for part of her religion is that she's going Well, if it's a, if it is a delusion, and, and I believe you that, clearly she's invented it. Yes. Right. Because it's buried in there, buried in there somewhere. So it's the place she wants to go, and she sees this this vast ocean and colors as as the calm that she doesn't have in her life. So it's a protection. Yes. Right. Was that in your mind when you sang it? Probably it was. Well, if if that's, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm really just getting, I, I'm working with you on this yeah. as a work, you know. And, and, and kind of coaching through. I like it. Is she a religious person? I don't believe that she's She's not a Bible banger. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Bible bangers, but you know what I mean. I mean, so, so this sentence, the blessed thing that God created in the seven days, where the hell did that come from? I thought we were in the sea. Okay, I like that answer. I like that. It gives me a layer to. I like that. I like that. Was that when you was that in the back of your mind when you sang that phrase? Is there is there kind of a Sunday school thing going on inside your heart when you when you sing that phrase? Kind of almost by rote. You know, maybe if she is crazy, you know, she's she's looking for reality, one she can create and one she can hang on to, and all sorts of stuff is popping up in her mind and and so one sentence is almost kind of, yeah, you know, like when God created that seven, and then the sea and the ocean, and I'm going to be with this, oh, God, he's gorgeous, isn't he? He's wonderful. No, nope, he's not really there. Am I going to, um, Mom, is, is the milk hot? I don't want milk. The, um, oh, God, is Stanley still here? You know what I mean? We need to know what layers you're in a particular time. Where in the first part of this aria recitative, where does that change, where does Andre Previn change her gears? I, it seems very clear to me, and you probably just know it. The one day on the ocean? Yeah, exactly. What's that bum, 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 dee do, dee do, dum, bum, 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 bum. Again, it's steadiness to it, or, you know, Oh, that's nice. You see the steadiness, yeah. Is it her, is it her metabolism, her heart? Yeah, heartbeat. Is it a journey she wants to be on? I don't know, is it? Do you think? To be on the sea. Yeah, to be on the, to be, I'm going to the sea. Is that what that heartbeat is? Or is it, or is it anxiety or excitement because of the, because of the eventual trip she hopes to take? Right, I think she's getting caught up in, in, the, in the waves. Okay. Did you have that in your mind when you sang it? Yeah. Well, I mean. You yeah, see where I'm going with all this? 
you know? You've got a wonderful fantasy. The engineering's done, you know? First engineer was Philip Patel, second engineer was, was Andre Previn, third engineer is you. Okay, we're gonna with the engineering. Now, what are we, what, what, what is this, where is this ocean coming from? And every time she says sea, is it the same one? Or is it just sea? Is it a word she likes because it makes her feel good? Is it the sea of an Edward Hopper, Edward Hopper painting? Or is it the sea of a, of a different painter? Is it the Atlantic Ocean or is it the Pacific Ocean? Is it a nebulous ocean? Um, is it real water? Great. Was it a sandy beach? A lot of waves? Big waves? Small waves? Still yeah, sea? Cold. Was it cold? Did she get a sunburn? <laughs> I'm not playing games. This is the fun thing we get to do. This is just pure, for me, enjoyment. I've had, I've had such a good time this last five, six weeks because I love deeply in every meaning of that word, Rick Rescora. There's not a thing about his life that I don't want to know. You know, That's not always the case. I cannot stand Tony Robbins. <laughs> I think he is just an awful piece of work. The only reason that I, not the only reason, but I mean a good reason, he is he's so important in all of his awful complexities that are metaphorical for all of our own complexities that he must be heard and he must be realized because we must run the other direction. If we ever have any of those kinds of inclinations that we are greater than nature itself, right? He's that important. But he is an awful piece of work, right? And other characters that we do that. But getting to know these smells, when I see, when I just look at a page of music like this, you know, and I see sea air and I see blessed things and I see the rest of my days, it doesn't make me feel emotion. I smell the air, right? Just a reaction to it. And then I see some, I see this rhythm. I don't know this music at all, right? And I see it in very definite sections, releasing a consciousness that at the end, we really shouldn't care whether she's nuts or not. She's gonna be okay, or not. <laughs> right? Try some of those thoughts. I think you just sing it better. Now, the only thing I would say as an engineer to another engineer is that I do believe that if you literally hear it, just like you said, and breathe into that and make it audible, just like we've been speaking here, and don't think of vibrating your voice or singing this, and, and try and concentrate on top of that, which you gave back to me, add to it that every vowel you sing has every other vowel in it. So that I don't hear, I can smell the sea air. That's CNN. That's teletext. <laughs> Right? I want to smell the sea air when you say that. Ah, the sea. That blessed thing that God created for seven years. How did he do that? What was that? I think that's what they're after, right? Go ahead. Let's just, let's just look at that rhythm really carefully. And, and I think the stability of this freedom is important. So he's given you Right? Just keep that, that pulse, that breath of fresh air. Every breath through your nose and your mouth and your ears and your head, down your spine, into your flat feet, in acceptable heels. Okay. Breathe quietly. Stand up. Nine, that's early, sweetheart.
tempo, which is really one. You say it's slow, you know, this is nice. Then we get this four, three thing that's kind of built in hemiola, and then all of a sudden, his bloody body in our God created. Then they give you a breath of in seven days. Did you know that? Well, where was I? Right? The all the sea was incandescent. Right? One more time. This isn't about my approval. This is about who blanched. So make it not awkward. Sing it even more intentionally. It's a very crazy thing to say, you know? So give every word its vibration, right? Don't try and smuggle through it. Blessed us, our God created in seven days, right? Whatever that measures, okay? Get the, start with the Odyssey. Hold it, hold it. A time enough to think, breathe into what you want. Okay, what's the most important word? Don't know? No. You think? To me, that's the most obvious. I'm not sure. I'd have to sit here and think, well, Tuesday I think I'll make it blessedness. Thursday I'm going to go for creative. Seven days is a punchline. God, who in the hell is going to create? Once you say the word creative, we're kind of stuck with options. <laughs> Certainly in this country. <laughs> okay? Just make up your mind. Certainly time is, is the engineering part of it. But what function did time give you? More, there was more time to, um, I took more time to have to come ah, up. Ah, now you've changed the tense. I took more time to do what? To have the intention behind the. It's simpler than that, Dolly. Mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I don't want to give you guys a methodology here. I don't want to burden you with anything. I want to make it as simple as possible. Breathe into that you want to make audible. You took the time to think. Oh, see. And it wasn't a sung tone. It was then became an audible tone. Otherwise, it's oh, see. Right? So yes, take time, but just hear what you want. Breathe into it and call it into existence. Right? Good. You're doing great. call that in professional singing? Expensive. <laughs> and you know why it's expensive? It's because that's what we, that's where we all want to go as human beings. That's why we love metaphors of words and echoes of emotion in musical language. That's what we're, we're yearning for. It's an instinctual drive in every human being. If you have to get into the arts and humanities, somebody stole it from you in the first place. This is the blueprint of who we are as human beings. Made audible in music, but certainly in song. And we'll pay vast sums of money regularly for the person 
who will open that door for us. It's not about you. You're the one that gets to open the door. And it's a deep pleasure, but it's not about you. It's about the sea, which we all think we've just sung. Right? It's that fundamental. And if, you, if that's your essence, all of you, and you convey that to your colleagues, you become wonderful singers that have beautiful voices. I don't, I'm not terribly interested in training voices, but I love to participate in the process of becoming a singer. Right? There's a difference. Engineering, three. This is, this is one. And you have that in your voice. And you should never sing anything that betrays that. It's along the lines of Dorothy Kirsten, who you should know as a singer of yesteryear, who said, never louder than lovely. <laughs> right? There's a, there's a world in there, right? Okay, I've distracted you. Start the whole thing again and take me on Blanche's rather wonderful, strange trip. strange sentences are. <laughs> I've been moved often by them. Aren't you? <laughs> I think I, seven days. What an idea. Right? We do it all the time. When you look at the television, that's all you see. You know? You want to have fun sometime or go raving stark mad? Right? For one thing, don't watch sitcoms. But if you do, try and watch it for five minutes with the sound turned off. You don't miss a thing. <laughs> the forecasting of bullshit is just, you know, all over the place. This is not our world. The literal of great music, and I, I would maintain this is great music, right? Great musical moments are all about that thing that's greater than any of the sum of your engineering parts, including ourselves, right? That's where we're going. So you don't ever have to communicate that. You don't ever have to be wondering at a word, shake your head. You know, I could go on about the engineering danger of doing that, or this especially. This is really awful. You see it all the time, especially in German leader performance. <laughs> right? Just stay in you. Close your eyes, turn around, sing to the trees, right? Is, she, is there anybody in the room when she sings this? Yes. Well, in the stage. Yes, in the stage. Is there anybody? Ah, in her mind, what? In the cell. Her cell. Her cell. I need to hear that in how you sing it. It was a good start. I, but I, this is huge information. It's also wise piano. It's not, you know, pianos, the marking serves a different person. We were really on a wonderful path and I broke you off, but it was the seven days I, I saw pages of a Bible flipping in the wind. <laughs> That illusion is really not biblical. It's just, it's sort of, you know, it came from somewhere. And that's the only point of reference she has. You know. One more time. No, I'm sorry. Go on from there. Let's leave the seven days alone. <laughs> so just, this is the measure. Sorry, Timothy. Sorry, I beg your pardon. This is the measure, this is the measure of days. You've just said, ah, seven days. You know, when you, when you find yourself doing that, the quickest and best cure I can offer you is to think in hail. It's almost impossible to go, <laughs> days. <laughs> you know, you tend to go, days, which is probably a good idea. Right? So just sing days and go on. Take it away, hear it, breathe into that. There you go. <laughs> Andre 
is also giving you the license that the triplet of the expression rest of my days is a wider, deeper thought that is questioning than spend on the sea. I think it's the, I think the, the rest of my sea is where we're going in the whole phrase, right? Mm -hmm. And he gives you that wonderful roll of glory. The rest of my days I'm going to spend on the sea. I can rhyme. Maybe she's nice, right? One more time, just that. <laughs> Actually, you're almost in it. You're the beginning of a, of a slow motion dive. <laughs> Why does your body do that? Um, it's real simple. Your fantasy to sing, your will to sing mm -hmm. is stronger than your personal knowledge of body is saying, baby, I'll do what I have to do. I'll make that come true. And it'll turn you into a pretzel. <laughs> right? And that's why it's important to get the engineering fixed up. Right? All you kids, all you kids, I'm sorry, but you young, you, you, you youngsters, you wonderful young colleagues, all of you have such a wonderful will to say. And this will get you through. The question is lining that up. How long? That's, that's why we need this time now, yeah. right? So this is the beginning of something that could really become a problem. And you don't want to do that. The breath will set you free, right? Forget about singing forward. Forget about the height of your voice. Forget about all that crap. Keep the feeling of inhalation in your posture, in your body, in your mind, all the time. Whether you're running up the stairs or you're on a pretzel or you're standing still. This is the feeling, whether you're lying on the floor, right? And never sing out of that, right? You'll be fine. That's, I'm sorry, that's information. Sing it pretty again. Sing it beautiful again. Sing me why in the words. Don't go forward on it. Right. 
The day I'm gonna tell you. No, it's the other way. That day, I can hardly, I, I can hardly wait to tell you how much, oh, it's wonderful. Oh, look at that bird. I mean, what I'm, you know, whatever it takes to get you right. Do you breathe more in your mouth or your nose? I get asked that all the time. Um, Wrong yeah. answer. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Most Americans breathe too little in their nose. We don't take air in here, and yet we're completely preoccupied with lifting the soft palate. Riddle me that. Right? Doesn't make any sense, whatever. Breathe in your nose. Engage the back side of the nose. The nasal pharynx is, has, been, has been called by phenomenal pedagogues the bow that plays the Stradivarius. And we all know how Heifetz felt about his bow. Heifetz was much more concerned about his bow than his violin. Right? This is our bow. Right there, boom, boom, boom. Play the measure before, sorry. Okay, now, Andre didn't say to change the tempo, right. but he changes the character. So let's not push it. We've had just keep the pulse, but the pulse is unrelenting. Yeah, thank you. Good. Yes, hold up, hold up. It's not very pretty. And it's also a word that can seem arch if we round it off too much, you know? All I can say is, yeah, it's a pain. But you have to find a way in something like this where, where it is beautiful. And it's not about the information of, and another thing, which you did, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would say this phrase, you have the chance after mustache to breathe very quietly and let that and have no edge on it. So it's and, and not and, right? And then we'll get through it because and he'll have. Oh, okay, fine. Right? The measure before that, breathe all through that measure through your nose. Good. Yeah, now, that was a wonderful phrase. Just make pay attention that the verb of the silver doesn't fall out of it. It was wonderful. The and and the have were exactly the same vowel, terrific, and watch was going to round them off, and we got a nice silver, and we got silver watch, silver watch, no. It's a scale. One more time. Almost. Do it again. Do it again. It was better first. Two measures before she sings after the stroke of moon. Do it. And sing just like this. Okay, now let's see an end. Transcendental is if is even though they're open bars, 
Just keep that pulse nice and steady. Whatever you decide that poco meno mozo, he's come after this. Yarida! sing the scale without the A. The two measures before that? Ocean as blue. Right, right there. No, you're, you're singing. Start it again. Give her the big bars and then start the whole thing. At the stroke of noon. When you go up that scale, just take your time and don't beat the A. Now I'm going to show you something. You'll see, I think, you, I think you're going to love it. Take a little catch breath after ocean. Oh. Into an ocean as a shot of blue. Right? The, the, the arpeggiation. What's the most important part of that sentence? What's the most important word? Into an ocean as blue as my first love's eyes. I think it's eyes. I think it's the blue of the ocean, the blue of the eyes. It's 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 pure Heinrich Heine. It's it's the it's the materializing, the objectifying of natural objects, right? Which is which is a, a tremendous delusionary force in in human nature, right? And that's why 
the eyes, if you want to breathe just quickly before eyes, you could. But the goal is, is the problem with the moon's eyes sounds to me like a resolved musical phrase of some kind of operatic emphasis. And it also brings out long's eyes. And I think it's all about housewife as long as eyes. And play the downbeat of eyes. Listen. Where was the last time we heard that? Back in the middle of at the stroke of noon. In the blaze of sun. Just before eyes, just take the breath you need and keep it in the same space and hold it forever. Right? Let's go back to into an ocean. That's too quick, sweetheart. Hear it, breathe into it. sing it with the same conviction and interpolate that A, fine. They can never be about long eyes in a vein <laughs> You know what I mean? Wonderful work. Nice to know you. All right, we have one last singer, and it's a wonderful piece to end on, the Chardash from Die Fledermaus. Jesse Nielsen, I know some of you have. <laughs> it doesn't actually cost any more if you stay, but if you have to go, that's fine. That's not a bad time to join us, ladies. There we are. <laughs> Oh, I think that's a great idea. Who are you? Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jesse Nielsen, and tonight Tim Bach and I will be performing the Tardas from Die Fledermaus by Strauss. Which Strauss? Bill Hahn. Okay. <laughs>
terrific. Sprichst du Deutsch? <laughs> Good. Um, in fact, do you know who, who Rosalinda is? When does this aria get, when does this aria get sung? Believe it or not, you can actually analyze operetta. <laughs> in fact, it's right hard on sleeve. I mean, it's real folks doing real stuff. And this thing has got so many more layers than just a show off piece. I mean, she is just, she's taking her husband for such a ride. <laughs> I mean, she's just, she just sees through that summer gun, you know, 10 miles against the wind, as we say in German, right? So there's, there is, there's a layer of sarcasm in there that is, oh, yeah. that is terrific. But, but there's also very much her roots, which are Hungarian, right? Which means all that Hungarian stuff has to be a mimic of the violin, the Hungarian violin, and it has to seem like second nature. It's slightly belabored right now, but we're not gonna get into that. What I would like to, however, look at just, just a little bit is um, whether we can differentiate between when she's saying something that we all get and we see what she's saying to him, but he doesn't get, you know? All that Lebensjust and Feuer and all that crap. And you know, I understand when the fire gets going, you just gotta dance with that girl, don't you, son? I understand that. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. You touch her, I'll kill you. <laughs> All right? Now, how did this go for you? It was okay. That's a good description. <laughs> okay isn't good enough, however. Okay. Good. Um, are you terribly passionate about those heels? <laughs> no. They're, they're really wonderful. And they're, they're going to be, for a normal person with a normal life, probably sensational. For a singer, I would maintain they are a nightmare for you to have to work over. Okay. They're just too high. You cannot stand up straight. Now, two things. One, that's engineering. The other engineering thing is, regardless of your ability and want to demonstrate the aria or act the aria, I mean, you know, God knows we're not going to come out here and sing, you know, Ave Maria like Schubert and it'd be Chardash. On the other hand, there might be a cool center inside of you that would be very similar, and that's not a bad idea. The problem is when you start gesticulating and do all this kind of stuff, and you've already started the whole thing by parking your physiognomy in an extremely, one, we're gonna get a lot of raising of the shoulders, we're gonna get a lot of the flying of the hips, which isn't good, and always rolling over and cutting yourself off here. And if there's anything this aria needs, you know, mezzos like to sing it, sopranos like to sing it, sopranos don't like to sing it, mezzos can't sing it, you know, it's one of those, you know? You know that. It's, this thing is a, this is a, you know, it's everything in the pack, right? Good, and you've got the pack. That's good news, right? First of all, let's get some engineering things out. If you wouldn't mind, I'd be so grateful if you'd take, you could kill somebody with those. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful, what? <laughs> right. Well, you guys share shoes. I get that. You know. Okay, now get away from the piano. All right. Right now, can you feel all ten toes? Yep. Can you feel your heels? Yes. Yeah. Did you notice what your body just did? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> it's heels and toes. You know, if you look at the R.C. Victor book of singing, it's yeah, about the front of your balls and your feet. And that arch, you know, everybody shall be a god. <laughs> it's just so awful, right? And it's wrong. It is totally dead wrong. It is cement shoes, 10 feet into the ground, right? Knees over heels. Did you hear that? That's, that's, that's a thought. Okay. All right, I'll grant you that it's over the arch of your foot, but let's call them heels right now. Okay. Now, what does that do to your hips? Um, it makes me feel raised a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Right. Can you just quietly do this into the ground? Make your feet tingle without hurting them? Does that make your tip, your, 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 your hips tingle? Almost. It got about here. Okay, try it again. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, now, if you want to have something really fun, I'll show you. Do that again, and when they're tingling, just stand out of them. Okay. Stand out of your hips. Hello? Now we're talking. This is engineering, right? Yeah. Now, do you notice how naturally your ears go right over your shoulders and your shoulders go right over your hips and your hips go right over your knees? And it's cement shoes. It's lined up. It's tight-waisted, barrel-chested, open-throated, empty-headed. 
that is a singer. <laughs> right? And you need every bit of that. Now, the point of all of this is, and, and I've been losing this all afternoon, this is, this is real engineering class 101. Your body has this miraculous thing called the spine. And we know that the ribs are attached to the spine, but what we forget is we're actually standing up CNN anemones Because all of the ribs come out of the spine and do this, right? And so the ones up here have a function, the ones down here have a function, and the ones down here have a function. Now this part of your ribs down here holds the balance of the diaphragm. That's why a nice, firm abdomen feeling energy is good, so that this can release, so that the diaphragm will react to your will to sing, right? Now the key to all of this is a straight spine, because if the spine is straight, the ribs stay out, and that's the inhaling feeling. And you want that feeling all the time, whether it's Ave Maria or Chadash or whatever the hell it is you're going to sing. It's that is the feeling of singing. I mean, you are or whatever the hell you're going to sing, right? And it's always this release up. In fact, the hips are into the floor and the chest and the rest of your body is out of the hips. And the anchor is the spine. And by nature, the hips roll along. Don't be terribly preoccupied by that. And don't send your energy to get a <gasps> breath down here. It ain't down there. The strength is down here, but in exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you keep that feeling. This is a big girl's aria. How old are you? Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Applaudable, right? Be careful. Okay. This, thing's, this thing can bite you, okay. right? And you want to sing it with your voice, right? Now let's just, let's start again like that. Is that uncomfortable? It's just different. I bet it is. Yeah. <laughs> right? Can we start? Yeah, thank you. Stop. What happened to the top of your chest in that phrase? Right, right here. This. Did it come up? No. no. It went down. Oh. Right? Because it was clang der Heimer. And I think you want to keep that inhaling feeling so that this always guides your feeling, this sort of inverted megaphone feeling. And keep this angle of your sternum, even with your chin. Okay. Pavarotti used to say, My voice, uh, it is here. Anyway, here. <laughs> And people would put microphones on my mouth and they say, no, you can put the microphone where you want. And my voice, they say, here. <laughs> right here, right? And inhale that phrase, so instead of getting clang at your high heart, which is slightly uncomfortable in the tessitura, I get that. But let's hear the clang at. Okay. What are the clang at like? The cymbals have a high sound. Oh. Clang at your high heart, you know, isn't a fire engine. It's okay. clang, inhale, breathe in your nose and your mouth, clang, der Heimat. Clang, der Heimat. Yes. Now, did you hear Heimat? Did you hear how it wasn't Heimat? It was Heimat. As it was trying to get to the mat of the phrase, this is singing. And you want to keep that. At your age, that's what you want to become addicted to. That's why this aria is difficult. Is you start layering it and acting it and thinking it, and it's very rangy. It's got words that are difficult that you're really doing quite good at. You know, I thought there might be some German in there or something because, for the most part, it was really very, very good. You know, you look slightly like a German. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Swedish, I don't know. Right? Start again. Wait a minute. Now, hear it. Breathe into it. Exactly how you want it to sound, your voice, not Rosalinda's, your voice. Yeah? Why do you put your, why do you, you, wanna, you go like this, you go like this, you go, you know, like a fish. Just bring it to you. Bring it, more nose, darling. Breathe in your nose, not for the nose, folks. It's not about the nose, it's about that miraculous channel behind the nose. Clang, 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 and the na na. That's where you're going. Clang, na. I'm oh, sorry. Hear it. Hear it. Breathe into that. Okay. Now, let the ah be in a nice, wonderful all. 
place. Let the O and the long tube of the O be your best friend. Every vowel you sing has every other vowel. So let the O be the depth that you want, and let every A ah have a little protection and rounding of it, right? And that hi ma is the same A. Ah. Hi ma, hi ma. Most Americans tend to think that this A ah is what you want to sing. In fact, you never, ever professionally sing this. Think that off. You always sing this off. Always sing this off. Klinge der Heimat. That's CNN. Okay. I'm from Michigan. I'm sorry. CNN. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. In Michigan, we do really bright days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. It's good. It's a good. We're getting there. We're getting there. And I know it's uncomfortably low, and that's why I want you to think high, okay. right? And and I get the bit about Michigan. <laughs> right? But I feel like you're continually fighting yourself whether you want to have energy going down in your body, or whether you want to release it going up, whether you need to bend over to get the vowel or the consonant, or whether I don't know whether that's a struggle or the tessitura. But you're very undefined. You're very what I would call undisciplined in your body, meaning. There is a lot of randomness. Discipline is just the ordering of random. It's getting rid of the rubbish, right? We want a tree trunk. And the minute she says that, the crowd goes, oh my gosh, we can sing the high Oh my God, we can sing. Because all the Viennese would like to think they're Hungarian as long as they never have to live in Hungary. <laughs> now, you're leaning forward. You're on the balls of your feet. They had a girl. That's, I know that's weird. You know what you could do? Yeah, yeah, bounce a little bit. There you go. Then get them down there. From here down, from here up. Stand out of your hips. Good. Keep it. Inhale. Okay, now stop. Don't move. Don't move. Exactly. Do you see what's going on? You see the dilation right here at the nose and the lift in the cheek and this aperture of the mouth? That's perfect. Okay. That is a singer's <laughs> mouth. That is a singer's mouth. When you smiled, you went, <laughs> and the vowel went, <laughs> right? <laughs> smile in your eyes, smile whenever you want. Smile when you're not singing. When you sing, think pleasant. You're just born to sing, sweetheart. Look at this, look at this. This is what defines a large part of the sound of her voice. This as well as the length of the neck. I know this voice just by looking at her physiognomy. But what I love is this Czech background of whatever this Slavic thing is that gives this fabulous lift in these cheekbones and so forth. I, what I don't know, and I'm not going to ask, nor am I going to find out, is how high the palate is. But since the sound is very round and tends to be naturally up there, I can only imagine the arch of your palate is rather high. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Fill it with sound. Okay. Right? One more time. You're still pounding on it. Bring it to you. Inhale it. Nose, nasopharynx. Yum, yum, yum. Kla, not. Kla, kla, la, la, I'm on. Good. Yes. Lift. Lift. not to let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Keep fighting. Look in the mirror. Watch yourself. You really cannot do that. Okay. When you don't do that, 
You know, I, you can hear that I, I like voices that are bright as well as anybody else, but I like voices that are in themselves. And the height is the reason the voices are bright, not because we've bounced it against something that's going out this way, right? There is nothing about the voice that goes that way. The sound may travel. You can even talk about that. Jira la voce has no direction intended in it. The word jira in itself is a, is a movement. It is a spinning of itself. It does not mean it's this any more than it means that it's that. It means that it is spinning in itself. It's like a gyroscope. This is jira la voce. Right? Go ahead. Keep going. Good girl. sing that phrase with your voice, there is not a man within a 50 miles that loses me. <laughs> <laughs> the Kling of the High Mod is sort of, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to sing with one of my the solos of my brother. Right? And here, and she looks straight at Eisenstein, her delinquent, philandering, shit husband, <laughs> and his drunken friend, and sings that line straight at him. She re-seduces her husband into bed with this aria. And he is so glad to have it. And, and at the last moment, he said, mm -mm. <laughs> Right? Sing it at people, just be it. Now, staging-wise, he, uh, Eisenstein, is just checking you out. He's checking out his own wife and doesn't even know it, right? And he loves it. And she's kind of turning away because she doesn't want to actually get eye-to-eye -eye on this kind of thing, right? So all these accents are sort of, oh, no, you're too close, sweetheart. This is for everybody. Oh, just settle down. <laughs> Which makes it, <laughs> right? You just have all sorts of imaginary fun with this sort of And all these high notes that come down, <laughs> whatever that is, right? But that's the kind of thing. But this whole thing is about, and then she starts talking about the values of these things. Plus, on top of it, she loves this Fatima. This is out of her soul. And that's what they, what got them together. This is a great relationship. It's just kind of on a bad track, which the Viennese somehow do every spring. <laughs> That's a goal. I knew you were going to do that. I love that. You know, that was a <gasps> notes there. Instead, it should be. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't mind. You know where the basic resonance of voice is not getting nice and dark in the middle of your body, not getting high and all that kind of stuff. We're losing a little bit of intention in the words. Okay. Don't put them forward, just sing me more words. Okay. Just be more specific about your words. Okay. And it's a thought thing. It's not a physical thing. It's not about teeth or lips or anything else. It's just the words are going to be something as long as they're never divorced of their own sound. All right, go on. <laughs> Geliebte 
liebes Bild, eine Heimat, eine Heimat, ein geliebtes Bild, is a wonderful poetic turn of phrase. You need to love that word geliebtes more. That loving picture of my heart, that place that, you know, I just see a picture of Heimat, my brother, brother, so oh, it's so beautiful. And you live in a terrible country, Vienna, but Hamburg. And the Heimat built, and this is where it gets really fun, the little young woman built this in. The Heimat built that she's talking about, that she loves, you know, when I see Heimat built, because you know, in the Heimat built, there is always the family. You know, your wife. <laughs> Waiting, lovingly, trustingly, at home, for <laughs> you. But you're here. So we imagine together your Heimat. You know? It's just, this is the layers that we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's just so cool. He's so toast. <laughs> Stand up. This is anchored so that this goes, yeah, and the note before the high note is too far forward. Okay. Let it be tall. There you go. No, all feet, toes, and the heels. That a girl. Breathe out. Breathe calm, 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 calm. Nose and mouth. You got it. Go again. Yeah, go again. That was so much right and so fun. You could do it again. Sorry, I distracted you. Do it again. Oh, uh, uh. Hear it. Breathe into it. This is kind of like fishing, right? Big cast. Fish, Eisenstein. On hook. Reeling in. Letting swim. Reeling in some more. Letting swim. Does it hurt yet? Why are you? 
you go, the deeper you feel and think. The lower you go, the higher you hang it from. That's a good thought for Satan. I mean, I'm, I'm, the word bleibt bothers me. It bleibt me. It's, a, it's an accent that I, it, it sounds a little like the chipmunks. <laughs> der bleibt in ein. What is the phrase? What are the words? Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Yeah. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. It's easy. It's no big deal. And take your time through it to say the words. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Or whatever the phrase is. Der bleibt in Ewigkeit. Okay, we're going to let that go. But in your private time, I want you to work out exactly where those notes are so it sounds just like Yasha Heifetz on the violin. And every chromatic scale is But it's not Okay, I'm done with that. Go on. Good fun, it's great. Oh, hear it. Okay. The feeling of Heimat is the most wonderful ah vowel, like a warm blanket around the universe. Oh, Heimat. And every time you say Heimat, you mean home and bed with this. He's mine, but he's a ship. <laughs> nice, wonderful, round vowels, and your body won't collapse. And just because you get sentimental doesn't mean it goes, oh, hi, oh, huh? okay. Sing, sing one time. Good. Now, think, Heimat. Sing, Homo. Okay, that's a little covered, okay. but that's the direction. Okay. Right? And quit moving around. <laughs> you actually live with Julianne, the first singer? Great. What you want to do is anytime one, whoever's practicing, the other one holds the other one's ankles. <laughs> now, this is very expensive, but I'm not going to charge any more. I'm going to do that, and you're going to see what happens. <laughs> such a story going on right here, <laughs> you know, that is just totally, and it's just randomness, girls, it's just randomness, it's just not being focused on that doesn't have to happen, and you get focused on that, and then you're done with that, it's just engineering, right, but it's not an option, this is not an option, this is not an option, this is not, these are not options, nobody wants to see this, 
right? <laughs> and regardless of what you want to do, acting and portraying and all that kind of stuff, it has to start with, <laughs> am I right or am I right? You know? Okay, go on. I'm not going back on my knees. <laughs> okay, Eisenstein by this time is sitting under his raincoat. He's not walking around. He is so tight. It's like, oh my God, this woman, I have to have her. <laughs> right? And now you entertain the troops. You want a little bit of this? You drop it. Right? Okay, now don't start that, sorry, don't start that phrase any faster than it takes for you to say, a This is Hungarian. Okay. It's fuck. <laughs> As I quote the Dalai Lama. <laughs> It swirls in the Hungarian brust. <laughs> you see both brust swell with the name of the lust. Right? She knows exactly what she's doing. By the time she's done with this aria, anybody that knows what's going on cannot understand what is wrong with Eisenstein. Go home and enjoy this smorgasbord of craziness. <laughs> Exactly. Ungarn Brust. Feuer des Lebens so schwer in einen echten Ungarns Brust. And then we're home. Okay. One more time. Good start. <laughs> yeah. What I would love is if it wasn't Feuer, kind of like a 747 taking off, but actually a Huey helicopter. Feuer, Feuer.
here, do you want to leave red, right? <laughs> now the trick is, all of that at the top of every voice is that funny symbol in the IPA that looks like a cowboy hat that John Wayne wore, right? It's one of those, it's the, it's, do you know the, what was that called? Uh, oh, God, I mean, Bonanza. Did you ever see Bonanza? Have you ever heard of Bonanza? <laughs> You know who Hoss was? <laughs> Hoss wore this crazy huge ten, it's called a ten gallon hat. Why? Because he turned it over and he put ten gallons in it. Right? Well, whatever that symbol. You know what the fuck I'm talking about, that symbol? Yes. That is the uh sound. It's actually it's one of the schwa's. The schwa's a different symbol, but it's the uh. That's it, and that's the top of every voice. And that's the vowel that's on it. You think the word, you think the clarity, but you sing, wah, 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 <laughs> You hear me sing, ah, la, I sing in la. Right? And that will release all of this stuff. Yeah? You're going to have to work that out. Were you having fun? sung it than not singing it? Did you feel better having sung the phrases than when you got done singing it? Did you feel worse? Better. You felt better? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you don't feel better having sung something than before you sang it, you're probably on the wrong path. <laughs> singing is release. Yes. Right? Yes. That's perfect. Okay. Where do you want to go from? You've just got no. is up, and it all is guarded and guided by a feeling of inhaling, right? And that oh, is not with your shoes, <laughs> it's with your voice. Leave your shoes on the ground, don't get them up around your neck. Thank you. I know I went over. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your